All right, Alphas, welcome to another Q&A Sunday. This is week number nine. I'm on location at a different location that I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> but I'm here with Unc. Unc is going to deliver me some questions for the Q&A Sunday. Yes, yes, I have all of your questions in my inbox. And I'm going to get right back to them next weekend. But I'm in a unique situation to be asked questions by someone that knows me really well. Someone that I think can ask me questions that I'll provoke my mind a little bit more and really give you a little bit more into the insights of what Life of Riley is. So before I do that, um, I wanted to give out some quick shout outs. Uh, Fuego, I wanted to give you a quick shout out because you keep doing your thing, you keep holding me down. Um, and also, I wanted to give a quick shout out to our LDR channel because you know it's up. You know it's up. Get on that channel. If you're watching this right now, as soon as you're done, just go right over to the LDR site. Take a look at the two videos that we have up. We have a third one coming up this Wednesday. Uh, I want you to also go to the life of D-Rock. Check out his channel. Like and subscribe, all three. Uh, make sure that you're commenting and holding your alpha down because this is not just my channel. This is our channel, and you know this. So without further ado, I'm going to hand the mic over to my man Uncle over here. He's going to ask me a few questions, and we don't edit. Q&A Sundays, we don't edit, because I like to give you the real truth. So, Unc, go ahead and fire away. Well, you have a chessboard right next to you. Yeah. I want you to look at that chessboard and pick three pieces and tell me how they reflect your life. Three pieces and how they reflect my life? Mm-hmm. Three pieces did you pick? A bishop, a knight, and a pawn. The reason why I chose these three and I didn't choose the king, you probably think I would choose the king, but the reason why I chose the pawn is I do understand that in some cases, especially being a YouTuber, especially going on the venture that I'm going on, that a lot of people attempt to use me as a pawn. Okay? A lot of uh, companies out there will want to look into my channel as I gain more subscribers and try to use me to push material, try to use me to um, go against my better judgments um, to maybe uh, push out their agendas. And knowing that I could be easily be used as a pawn, this needs to mean something for me so that I understand that I can't be a pawn and I have to be true to myself. Because it's very, it's very easy to fall into the trap. Sometimes the money looks good. Sometimes questioning your morals against a $10,000 payday is an easy choice for some and a hard choice for others. But I choose the pawn because I don't want to be a pawn. I choose the bishop because navigating through my own personal faith and this world and what goes on on YouTube, what's politically correct, what's not politically correct, um, is very difficult. My life is literally on display for everyone to see. Everything that I do. And being extremely moral sometimes becomes difficult when you have people that necessarily don't um, subscribe to what you're doing, have something negative to say about what you're doing, or just flat out don't believe in what it is that you're doing, okay? So, seeing that this bishop always has to walk straight lines, yes they do, and it's diagonal lines. Diagonal line, not straight lines. I mean, yeah, it's a diagonal line, but they always have to move in one solid direction, right? Every time. They can't pretty much like uh, maneuver around anything. They have to always walk in a, in a diagonal line, meaning that you can always telegraph what they're gonna do next. Um, I don't know, for me, I feel like I just want to be an open book. I want everyone to see me for how I am, and I want to walk in my personal faith, live life like I normally do, and, you know, don't subscribe to fear or anger. The night, I chose this because I have to be very creative. 
in what I do. I have to be really creative in finding different ways to entertain you, to give you the information that's important to you. And at the same time, I really, really love to give back to the community. Okay? And sometimes people look at that, or a lot of times when someone swoops in and saves you, they look at it as the white knight. Right? So, knowing that the idea of the knight is perceived as something positive, where in history it's not always the case, but the way people look at it right now, it's positive. So, that's my answer. <laughs> I don't have anything else to say to that. So yeah, the, the, the pawn, the bishop, and the knight. With the current situation of, what they call it, YouTubing, um, YouTubing policing, how do you feel about when you see all these videos of different things happening with law enforcement? Do you go by exactly what you see on the tape, or do you wait till more information is given before you comment? At the beginning, I used to go by what was on the video. And um, it wasn't until I talked to you several months ago. I think we were talking about... Um, was it Freddie Gray we were talking about? It could have been. It was Freddie Gray because it was Baltimore. Okay. We were talking about that, and I was really upset over what happened. And I was looking at it as face value. Like, they did this. This is what they did. I'm so angry, right? Mm -hmm. And you didn't disagree with what I said, but you told me that um, I have to learn to look at things from all different angles. I have to learn to understand what is the policy and procedure for that situation? What does a police officer have to do in that situation? Did the police officer actually act in accordance to what he or she was supposed to do and something went wrong? Did they act outside of what they were supposed to do and something went wrong? I have to learn to analyze the entire situation and then base my opinion on the understanding of what I already know. And I try to do that now. So when I see these videos on YouTube, um, I try to sit back and think, all right, there are three sides to the same story, right? Was the person the wrong? The person that was receiving the violence, were they wrong? Was the police officer wrong? Were they both wrong? What happened? And I try to wait and mellow and figure out, get all the pieces before I make a decision. But yeah, it's a very big difference between how I used to do things you know, several months ago versus how I do them now. It's really because of our conversation that we had. Last question for you. What's life's biggest fear? What's my biggest fear? I'm terrified of heights. Um, I'm really, really terrified of heights, actually. I'm definitely afraid of heights. And it's not being up high, it's falling. I'm afraid of falling to my death. All right. I can be in roller coasters, I can be in planes, I can be in helicopters, I can do all that, but um, I can't look over edges. You know like I can't. What that is, right? What? Control. I have the same fear, but if you're really afraid of heights, you can't do roller coaster. You can't get on a plane. True. You can't get on a helicopter. But if you're in something that you feel as though you have control, that you won't fall, that your safety is secure like you need it to be, the big thing is control. And I think a lot of us have that problem. And it's funny to hear you say <laughs> that you have that problem. Because as a kid, I used to have a reoccurring nightmare and I used to get chased. Oh. And I would always get chased to the roof. And the only way to go was down. Really? And I would always get pushed off the roof, but I would wake up before I would hit. So when I realized that I could take control of it by not going to the roof, I didn't have that dream anymore. But uh, for heights, people that are afraid of heights, mostly it's because of control. Yeah, I guess that's what it is. I always thought it was just falling itself, but maybe it's control because the um, I can do roller coasters, but I can't do the pirate ship. Because the pirate ship has that one bar. Uh -huh. And I tried the pirate ship before, and I, I always felt my legs slipping. So I was like, I can't do the pirate ship, can't do the Iron Eagle. Um, I can't do Ferris wheels that swing. That's control. I can't do that. Um, 
I can do like the Space Needle, um, the Masonic Temple. I went all the way to the top, the George Washington one. Mm -hmm. I can do that. But anything, me being several stories up on a balcony, looking over, feeling the wind, I can't do that. I can't go out on the balcony. I'll freeze. Control. I'll just lay on the ground and I'll freeze. Control. Yeah, that's, that's, that's my biggest fear. Control. Because I understand it, when you're falling, you don't have control. Yeah. It's free. It's free falling. You can't do anything to stop it. And when you can't stop something, it means you, don't have, you can't control it. So that's what your fear is. You can't control it. Because when you're going up the steps, you got bands to hold on, you got yeah. this to hold on. But when you're on that balcony, it's not enough stuff to stop you like you want. So you don't have that control, so you're on edge. When you're in that, you're in that uh, roller coaster, you got the, you got the pull-down bar, yeah. you got the bar across, you got everything that you're not moving. And when you're not moving, it's control. You want to play? Hey, that's the safest thing out there right now. You got control. But once you manage to get to that point that you can control everything around you because you're at peace with yourself, you won't no longer be afraid of heights. Wow. It's funny you say that because when I'm on roller coasters, I always keep checking this thing and the seat belt to make sure it's fine. And also when I go to um, sporting events, uh -huh. if I'm in the nosebleeds, for me to walk back down, I get terrified. I can walk up just fine, I understand. but walking back down, because usually there's no banister, yeah, it's, I get terrified. It's, like I literally get noodles in my legs and I, I, I get terrified. Think about that one bad step. Yeah. Tom, yeah. That was interesting. Yeah, that's what I'm afraid of. So guys, thank you for coming out to another uh, Q&A Sunday. Uh, I enjoy giving away my secrets at this point and my personal thoughts. Uh, thanks again to Unc for coming out and giving me the questions for today's question and answer. Hopefully you know a little bit, bit, a little bit more about me. And um, I want you to go to Unc's page when it's available. I'll put it right in the description. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe to this video. And go out to our Like Demands Results uh, page. Comment, like, and subscribe there. And the same thing with DRock. All right? Look forward to seeing you throughout the week. Stay tuned to the next video. Live life because life demands results. So what do your results say about you?